What's going on, Dragon Ballers? We're here with Tim Palacios, my teammate, and the pan player that everyone aspires to be. Shout out to Scott Dashy. This guy's been playing pan for so long. Uh, so this man finished third place today at the ARG Las Vegas event. Uh, for people who don't know, what is your like uh, infatuation with pan? Like, why have you just stuck with this deck for forever? Well, she's really consistent. Does what she does really well, and doesn't have a terrible matchup. The worst matchup that I ever had was Hero Storm, and that got nerfed to the ground. So. I don't have to worry about that, and so when I play any matchups, it's 50-50 at worst, I figure. So if I ever get in a bad situation, I'll just change that and be in a better situation because I have seven uh, basically after uh, Zeno. Now let me ask you a question. With like Janemba running rampant like it has been recently, do you feel like it's more of like an anti-meta pick or like a strong meta pick? For Pan? Yeah. Pan is a really strong meta pick, I feel like. She's yeah. strong with defensively, offensively. She's... She can play any any type of way. She can be super aggro, super conservative, being controlly. Just however you want to play it, whatever the matchup calls for, that's how she can play. Awesome. All right, let's get into the main deck. Sure. Uh, pan leader first off draws on the front side, draws on the back side, um, gives it 5k. There you go. And uh, so the first thing you summon gives it 5k. If it becomes 20, you draw. Same thing on the other side, except that you just flip uh, two energy when you awaken. Uh, for one drops, play a four, intensifying power trunks. Uh, it's really great going into uh, just summoning for aggro, uh, for going into chain attack, evolving into it, uh, awakening, whatever I need for it. Play two, Saiyan Kava. Uh, this is a more recent addition in the last uh, two tournaments that I played in. Mostly because of Shenron was what it was here for. Uh, aggroing Shenron down really early, giving him a double strike, going for 20k since it's, Pan gives it 5k is really strong against Shenron, and they don't really want to take double that early. Did you ever kind of feel bad when you came across like a turn one Crisis Crusher? Sometimes, but uh, you know it, it is what it is. And after that, I learned I'm not going to play it for that turn or that that match. Fair enough. But I didn't actually play any Shenron, so I didn't have any use for this uh, for the most part this weekend. <laughs> I uh, play four Yamchas, heart and soul of the deck for the Heart's most part. Heart so good. Uh, you draw a card when you summon it because it comes 20k. You swing every single time you swing. You search top three for an Earthling. And you can grab your super combos. You can grab, grab your overrealm. You can grab your chain attack. You can dra grab anything you pretty much need for any situation. And if you keep it alive, then it's not just pluses every turn. Yeah, absolutely. And it's so hard to clear off the board. A two drop 15k on turn two for the opponent to clear is really difficult. Play four Zarbon. Now this is definitely a spicy tech that a lot of panelists don't play, so definitely, yeah. definitely get in depth on this one. Yeah, this one here, it took a lot of thought on. I was playing the championship uh, Vegeta and attack and active battle cards. I was playing uh, Captain Ginyu's in the main. I decided to cut both of those. I was playing two and two of each. I've just cut all four of those cards and I put these in. The reason being is if I don't see Yamcha or don't summon Yamcha, then I summon this to the field on turn two. And now this, every single turn I'm swinging for 15k, they either have to combo to survive, not take damage, keep something alive, whatever it is, or if they're gonna swing at it and kill it, I'm gonna give something on their side of the field minus 15k, which will probably kill it, and I'm gonna draw a card for it. So it punishes my opponent for having to deal with this. It's a problem card. Super value, super duper value. Playing four, sorry, two of the quick rush trunks. Uh, just crit, uh, early game crit, drop a turn two, um, make a 20K, crit their anything out of life. They don't want to really want to crit early at all because then it's hand advantage for me. Yeah, it's uh, also a chain attack evolve target. Right, it's mad of versatility because you can evolve over it. You can also summon it with chain attack, really good. Yep. And so I made the deck more energy efficient by having a lot of two drops. Uh, four super combos. Uh, I use Bulma. You can use Roshi. Uh, Roshi's sparking, but I prefer not to have to uh, have to play against my overall cards to have the spark all the time. So I choose this, and uh, it's searchable with the option. Uh, quick question back to all the two drops. So you said you lowered the curve of the deck by adding all two drops uh, and not having the Vegeta to attack active modes. You still have chain attack, but does Striving ever give you an issue all, to, all throughout the tournament or not really? No, I didn't see Striving once. Um, but if I if I do see a Striving, then uh, I'll probably just summon either a two drop to uh, gain the draw 
or I'll just start playing threes depending on what turn it is. Right. And I'll just pretty much ignore it. Fair enough. You, you, still, and you still have Chantac to beat over it too, which is good. Yep. Or I'll just go Zeno and just reset the game. Like, I, I don't want to deal with it. Fair enough. Get out of my face. I don't want to see this. Yep. I play four Fearless Pans. MVP? A uh, very, very big MVP card. Uh, it's, a, it's a game finisher. I can uh, build a big board and summon this. A lot of people play three. Some people play two. This is a, I feel like a four of mandatory inside pan. It can save you against Victory Strike if they're not playing Height of Mastery or they don't summon it. And uh, it can give you like so much value. If, you, if they're not awakening you, then you can summon it, make your leader 15K, and you can still swing and you're not awakened. It's so versatile because like barrier blocker for victory strike matchups, but also like the amount of times I see people play fearless, give everything 5k double strike, maybe you don't kill your opponent that turn, then you summon another one the next turn, and the, the fearless pan from the previous turn is another 5k double striker. Yeah, That's I was, nuts. I was playing against Marcus in uh, round six, Marcus Contarsi, my team captain, and uh, my, for my first two turns, I had three uh, double shot Vegetas in hand. I didn't swing, I didn't play any energy. He swung at me with his lead. I summoned double shot, turn one. Next turn, uh, he swung with the elite again, summoned double shot, he swung with something else, I summoned another double shot, turn three came around, I slammed this, and I had leader double strike, 15K, and then three double shots, 20K double strikes. That's going ripped. At him. That is so ripped. I forced him to chain, to chain Zeno on his next turn. There was no way he was gonna deal with that. Absolutely insane, lately. The, the turtle of this deck and the pressure it could put out is insane. Uh, speaking of, Four double shots. I love will never the cut promos. this card. It is one of thank you. Uh, I love this card to death. It's one of my favorites to play in the deck. I, it, if you just do it on the last turn, you get a body on board. Or sorry, not last turn, last swing of their turn. Uh, you get a body on board. You draw a card, and then when it comes to your turn, you can swing with it. You can drop a fearless, give it double strike. You know, it, there's a lot of things you can do with this, and it gains uh, tempo. It's a good tempo swing. Absolutely. Two legics. Uh, I was considering cutting this card. I'm glad I didn't. There's a lot of turns when uh, people were summoning turn one Kanoa, turn one Dende, turn one, uh, you know, Kami. Just whatever they're gonna do. Not so much Kami, but you know, those type of cards. And uh, I would just summon this to the field, draw a card, then summon something else. And yeah, it's really nice for like all your one drops because they don't they don't trigger Pan's effect, so you can free this out. Get, get Pan's effect and then play a one drop and still like go, go aggro. Yep, I did that a couple times with my one drop chunks. Two digging deeps, probably the MVP of the deck, honestly. Uh, there was a lot of decks this weekend that wanted to stall me out, didn't want to awaken me, uh, especially a lot of victory strikes. They don't want to do damage to you. The Brawlies will swing at your battle cards, they're not going to swing a lead to get their effects. And so uh, in my top four match for, for third and fourth, I was at, uh, I set myself up to have two life, or sorry, six life, and then I summoned this. Well, first, he was only playing two bloodlust. So I baited it with a Haru, and Haru went through. So I summoned this, I swung with it, took two life, restud it, and then I was able to awaken after I, uh, I think I summoned a Yamcha as well, awakened, reset two energy, summoned a uh, time patrol trunks, and uh, I just, I built this entire board that I pressured his uh, Brawly Victory Strike deck a lot. And I left him at, uh, I think, from five, either at six or five, all the way down to two for the turn. Solid. You ever wish you played uh, maybe one or two more Digging Deeps? Sometimes. Sometimes I really wish I would see it. Um, but usually it's I get it when I need to. With all this drawing that I'm doing the previous turns and searching that I can do, I usually pick it up. and. Uh, you know, then I can just go off. I try and time it so that I summon it right when I need to. Fair enough. Four hits. Won me the game against uh, top eight with uh, Yamcha. And uh, it's just solid card all around. You, you can't really get around this card with the fact that you summon it, take two cards out of hand, and you pretty much go for game, take two of their game super perfect combos. perfect knowledge. Take, yeah, exactly. You know exactly what to expect, what their strategy is, what they're coming at you with, and you can prepare for it. Absolutely. Gotta play Chain Zeno. Chain Tax. Uh, there's not much to say with this except, you know, evolve targets, bring out anything 15k, which is pretty much the entirety of the deck except for hits. I can bring out anything, literally. And, uh, 
just go from there, just value wise. You yeah. set the game with Zeno, attack into active battle cards. Yeah, no, the better red cards that like the game gets, especially 15k or less, the crazier chain attack gets, and the more like chain Zeno just becomes like a failsafe. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Uh, three Zeno. I don't like two. It's not consistent enough to when I need to see it, I don't see it. I don't like four. I will see it too often. And I'll, I'll clog my hand with Zenos, which is not good. I don't want to charge more than one or two off-color cards. It's always got to be red. Yep. And so... Like having three is the right number that I, uh, I always see it right at the right time when I need it. And so there was one or maybe one or two games when I didn't get it. But other than that, I, I always had it. So three is a good number. Consistent enough to not brick on it. Absolutely. Yep. Two time patrols. Yamcha search targets. I don't play the other one because of that reason. These are Earthlings. Um, I get the, the draw with Pan. I get the draw with uh, time patrol. I usually play it first. First thing I summon usually, I try to. That way I can see the top two, filter it, put something I don't want at the bottom, uh, take what I do want with him, and then draw a new card with uh, Pan. Super solid, super consistent. The one of M2, it's for all the one drops that come out early game, uh, Crisis Crusher, for example. And uh, that's, uh, I also play uh, for the Black Mass Sand. Mm. They drop that, I don't want to play in the chain attack and. Like discard two after Zeno because of it, which yep. I did do. I played against a baby, and he put that on board, and I was forced into chain Zeno, and I, I took the risk, and I discarded, and I didn't even get the draw for Pan. I drew five, and uh, then I had to discard two, so I played with three cards. Did you win that game? Yeah, I did. <laughs> Solid. <laughs> so good. And then the only negate I play in main after image is probably... One or two, the, the first or second best negate in the game in my consideration, considering that it doesn't stop the attack, but it makes it so that the swing they're swinging with, unless it's with Amira, is not going to go through, because they're not going to combo. Right. Like, I, my leader will be 40, uh, it will be 50 or 55k, depending on which side I'm on, and you're swinging with 20. You gonna combo 40k? No, I don't think so. Definitely not. not yeah. Unless you're going for game and you absolutely need to. Mirror is like the only card in the game that kind of invalidates this, but it's so good against Victory Strike. Yeah, yeah. and it's it doesn't negate the attack with Victory Strike, so you can activate it, and then it reduces uh, power so that you have a better chance of Vic living through it. Yep, absolutely. And, and uh, you can also take a light because it spark has sparking on it. So wait, wanna hop over to the side deck? Yeah. So for side, play one. Two shrouded never came in because it's uh, either for the mirror match, which I never played, or a Janemba matchup, which I never played. I can live to about turn eight average with Janemba. Uh, everyone usually dies on turn six. Pan doesn't draw enough, and I can reset my hand with Zeno to where I can filter my hand back into the deck and uh, make the game last longer. So I can go to about turn eight, which is validates this to be played. Solid. Uh, Kanoa. I only played against one deck that had one Shugesh in it, so I never sided in it ever. I didn't need to. Uh, the Shugesh wasn't even relevant. He uh, comboed with it once and didn't even summon anything. Like, that was in my top four match, probably, uh, third or fourth match. Yeah. Uh, Banish your foos. These are for the eight baby. And uh, I didn't. Uh, I did see the ape on board once. And it was kind of funny how that died. It didn't even die on my turn. He uh, he swung with it. I activated it after image, gave it minus 10. And uh, so then he uh, activated, I put a, a Vegeta, he swung with the leader. Uh, I comboed with a Vegeta and put it on board. He activated baby's effect, gave his baby a minus uh, 15. So it was at 5K Right. Uh, to give my Vegeta minus 10. And so my Vegeta was 10k. He overwhelmed uh, the time time control the time Kanoa. Uh, the lights guide. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, he put lights guide on board, and then he swung at Vegeta, and I activated another after image and killed Baby. <laughs> oh, too busted. When you, when you bait yourself into the losing your boss monster, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah it was it was an amazing turn for me. I played two uh, minus Kelly. Absolutely needed against Brawly matchup. Anything that was running Bloodless, which was the Brawly, uh, like it, it saved me a game completely. I had this in hand, I had Chain Attack, I did not have Zeto, I was at three energy, I had one red other than those two in hand. 
I, I drew a card. It was Zeno. I had three, exactly three in drop. I charged my red, activated Killy, put three out, and he had one yellow up for Bloodlust, and I go chain Zeno, and we were, we were set out of his victory strike. Solid. Two horrors. I had that three. I cut one. Uh, this is for obviously the yellow green matchups, which uh, I've sided in every single time I went against Brawly, and uh, it, it worked fantastic. It's, it's an amazing card for that matchup. Frieza Army Reborn. So, what do you want this in against? This is for the mirror match because uh, the game is grind, and uh, we'll go to six, seven, eight, nine energy. I can take life with uh, Trunks, I can take life with uh, Kaba, I can take life with Digging Deep. I can get myself to two if I absolutely want to and I can drop this with five. And then it's just a game pusher at that point. Solid. Extra M2 for the same reason that the main board is in. Uh, two Ginyu. I cut these from the main. They work for the Shenron matchup for the most part or for mirror matches. And uh, those are rare right now. So um, I put them to the side. I did side them in um, once uh, against uh, the Yamcha player that I played. And uh, we actually had a turn where he played a, a, uh, uh, a Gohan, the burst attacks. Uh, drew two cards for his effect. And then uh, when it came back to my turn, I had enough cards in hand to where I summoned this, attacked into the leader, activated effect, stole his Gohan, attacked. Drew two cards myself, and then uh, so he had my my Ginyu. He summoned another Ginyu, took it back. Yeah. <laughs> did the same thing. And then my turn, I drew into another one, so I activated another one, took it back, <laughs> and then did the exact same thing again. <laughs> oh my God, Reds! The battle cards in Red are just so insane to, to pull off crazy shenanigans like that. Yeah, it was it was actually hilarious watching this whole unfold. And then I played two unending awakenings. Uh, I swapped these out. Uh, or in, per se, to have extra negates uh, when I'm playing against Mira, because after image doesn't work, and this is solely for the Mira swing, so Excellent. I can just stop the attack completely. Got to completely stop the attack. Yeah, Mira kind of validates that. So we've got the sick third place trophy right here. That is so awesome to go with the ARG Valentine's event uh, thing they got going on. So Tim, uh, final thoughts, shout outs about the event, or shout outs to anyone in general? Uh, yeah, uh, our sponsors uh, at PPG. They're amazing. Uh, they had an event this weekend. I'm sure it went smoothly. Everyone did had a good time. I haven't heard any points about it, so it had to be a really good event. Uh, ARG for hosting Vegas. Uh, our team, Shenron's Lair. You guys can check us out at Shenron'sLayer.com. We have a, uh, a deck builder there as well. And, uh, you know, just uh, everyone, like my girlfriend, for coming with me. That was that was amazing. I came here to, all the way. And, uh, yeah, everyone that I played against, you guys all have great matches with me. Sweet, man. Congratulations again. We'll see you next time. All right. Thanks.